If you're new to kayak fishing in La Jolla, today I'm going to show you the two rigs that you need to know, plus a little more. Let's go. Welcome back to Sam Dog Kayak Adventures, guys, and today I'm going to show you how to rig a fly line and a dropper loop. The first two rigs you need to know when you're kayak fishing La Jolla, plus a little rockfish rig tutorial. Let's start with the fly line, guys. I usually use about a 50 or 60 pound leader, about 10 feet long that I attach directly to my main line, which is 60 pound braid. I use the crazy Alberto knot to attach the main line and the leader. For this example, I've got 25 pound mono instead of 50 or 60 pound leader material because it's easier to work with on camera. My go-to is always a medium heavy rod and my reels are usually pen fathom 15 two speeds. But before you use either one of these two rigs, you're gonna have to catch your own bait. So let's show you guys how to catch your own bait and then show you how to build those rigs. Okay, to catch bait guys, you're gonna need to get yourself a sabiki and honestly, I would bring two because one might break. And you're gonna need a two to four ounce weight depending on the current. This is what a sabiki looks like. Multiple small hooks with little glowing beads. You attach the weight to the swivel with the clip and tie the other swivel to your main line. This is what it looks like from top to bottom. This would be attached to your main line. There's a hook. There's a hook. There's a hook. There's a hook and so on all the way till you get to the weight, which is attached to your swivel with the clip on the end. If you have a fish finder, you wanna drop it to whatever depth you see the bait ball at. If you don't have a fish finder, you wanna to go to Scripps Pier and fish on the north side of Scripps Pier. There's typically bait hanging around there and you can catch them without seeing them on a fish finder. Now that you're either at Scripps Pier or you have a bait ball underneath you, you wanna drop the sabiki into the water Lift it up and down three to four feet at a time, over and over, till the rod goes bananas. So for the crazy Alberto, what I do is I take about a 12 or 14 inch piece, the end of the line, just fold it in half, right? Just like that. So you've got a bit of a tail right here, and you have a nice little loop like that, okay? Then you take your braid, now this is this, this is not as really simple. You just have to remember a couple of little things. You're going to go up through the bottom, right? We've just pulled it up through the bottom. Whoop. The rabbit, the way you can remember is the rabbit goes out of the hole. He comes out of the hole. Then you just grab it like that. So now you've got the line pinch between your fingers and the braid. So what you want to do is now you take all three. See how all three are just kind of pinched right there? So now you've got your braid right here, your main line right here, and the tag end right here. The rabbits came out of the hole, and you're just gonna wrap them seven times. So, one, two. Now, if you can see, the spacing is fairly even right there. So you've got seven wraps right there, and then you're gonna see how my finger's pinched right there and holding it? Now you're gonna go the same way. You don't go the opposite way. You keep going the same way and you go back up. And the spacing in between, what you wanna do is you wanna have that braid land in between each gap. I gotta pull it away a little bit to do it, but hopefully I'll be able to show you when it's done here. So now you go back seven times, same way, one. And as you go up, you can kind of grab it because it'll be done. Five. Now hopefully this looks pretty decent and you can see it's pretty even. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's going to cinch down on itself, but the more evenly spaced and symmetrical everything is, the smoother the knot's going to uh, clinch down on itself. Remember, we went out the hole, so now the rabbit's got to go back in the hole. So you take this tag end right here, and you put him in the hole. You got to go back in the hole, and you do it twice. The rabbit's scared as Scared as a mofo, so he's gotta hide twice. Just remember, go back in the hole twice. Went through once, now he's going through twice. So now it should look like that. Just like that. Then what you do, I'll take it off camera real quick and give it a little wet. And then you pull the leader and the braid. And it should cinch down on itself. And you should give it a nice good tug. There we go. Let me clip it off and I'll show you what it looks like. When it's all said and done, it should look just like that. It's probably not the best focus, but it's great not to attach your leader to your braid. It's what I use every time. 
Alrighty, boys and girls, it's time to uh, attach our hook to our fly line. Just so you're aware, I'm typically using a 1-0 circle hook. Uh, typically, the biggest I use is a 2-0 circle hook. But for this example, I've got, I think it's a 4-0. Um, I think you'll be able to see a little better. But I use a San Diego jam knot to tie my tag end of my leader to a 1-0 or 2-0 circle hook. So let's do that now. Also, just so you know, right here, it's helpful to have this guy in here. It's just a zip tie that has a little uh, eyelet on it so you can attach the um, hook, makes things a little easier. Just so you know how to do the uh, San Diego jam knot again, here we go. Let's go right through the hole. And now I'm gonna attach it to that uh, eyelet on the zip tie. San Diego jam, we'll do this. It doesn't matter how high or tall you do it because you're gonna slide it down. So we'll do it just like this. There you go, San Diego Jam. All I've done is gone through the eye down there on my hook. Let's grab it just like this. Take your tag end right here. Boop. You're just gonna wrap it seven times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All I've done is wrap that line, that loop that I made all I've done is wrap it seven times. Now there's a big hole down here, but you see this big hole? I'll zoom in a little bit, I think. See that big hole? Just go through that hole, whoop. And then you see this little eye right there that was made. There's a little eye right there. You just go through that eye, like so. Now you've just gone through the bottom, through the top. Then all you do is just take everything just slowly pull. Usually I wet it, but I think it's working out just fine. See how it makes that beautiful, beautiful knot. And then you just take it and pull. Slides down all the way on your hook. And that's what she looks like when she's done. Now all you gotta do, take your handy dandy fingernail clippers. Boop. Now you've got your fly line. That's pretty much the number one way to fish La Jolla. All right, guys, this is the technique that you're gonna use when you're fly lining La Jolla. Basically, you're just gonna nose hook the mackerel that you've caught through the side of the nose, throw them overboard. Your reel will be in free spool. So he's just gonna be going, 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 going. You let him go behind you. Uh, I would say, I usually like to go about 25, 30 yards. You don't have to go way far back there. And then you leave it out of gear. You thumb it. You thumb it the whole time. And occasionally, you're gonna see your line do one of these where it just takes off. You thumb it a little harder. That mackerel may just be getting upset, not thrilled that you're uh, trolling him as bait, trying to take off. If you thumb it and it just stops, no problem. It's just the mackerel. If you thumb it, if it starts going and you thumb it and you start putting your thumb down a little bit harder and it just keeps going, you start counting. I'm typically a five count guy. Some guys do seven, some guys, some guys do three. But yellowtail don't have teeth, basically they're inhaling the fish. What you wanna do is as soon as you realize that that uh, line is peeling and it's not the mackerel, one 1,000, two 1,000, three 1,000, four 1,000, five 1,000. Now you've had the rod on the side of your boat. You're trolling off the side of the boat, holding it in your lap, out of gear. And as soon as you hit that five 1,000 mark, now you take that rod, you point the tip at the bow of the boat and put your rod into gear. That's what sets the hook, and then it naturally turns the boat the way that the fish is going. So you're fighting it forward or backwards, not side to side. Never fight the fish side to side. That's how you get rolled. And that's it, guys. That's uh, how to fly line La Jolla, how to build the rig, the specs on the stuff I'm using, and the technique. That's pretty much it. Let's hit the dropper loop. You. All right, guys, let's get to the dropper loop. Typically, I'll use 10 ounce weights for my dropper loop, depending on the current, sometimes 12, sometimes 16. It just depends. So always carry a bit of a variety of weights um, in your box. So all you want to do, and I just use a clinch knot for this, take the end of your uh, main line. All I did was cut the hook off of the fly line we just made. Do one of these guys right through the... Hello. There we go. One of these guys like this. All I'll do is just... Got my tag in right here. Do this right here. I just give it a spin. Give it like four or five spins. I gotta put it on the ground so it doesn't unspin. Just take this, go through the hole in the bottom. And see how it's made another hole right here. 
that hole. Let's go through that hole. That's sort of what it'll look like. Then you just pull. I always take it off camera, give it a little wet, just like that, and just pull down. Boop. And that's cinched on down. Let me just uh, trim the tag in. So boom, now you've got a weight at the end of your line. If you want to make your dropper loop, I usually like to go about mm, three feet up the line. Three feet-ish, doesn't really matter, but about three feet from the weight. So I'll go up the weight about three feet. That's where I'm at right now. Then you make a big loop like this. One big loop. See that? You could literally just twist around your finger once like that, and now make that big. So now we got this big loop, right? Boom. What you do is you take these two spots right here where they cross and you start twisting them together. I go five times. One, two, three, four, five. So now you've got this little hole you've made with the twist. You gotta reach through, grab the end of that line, pull it through. Now what you do is, see if I can make this work out, I got the weight on that side. Normally I stick this part I just pulled through with my teeth. I just grab it with my teeth and I pull from the left and pull from the right. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. You won't see me grab it with my teeth, but that's what I'm gonna do so you can see how the knot goes. So I'm gonna grab it with my teeth and then pull from the left and then pull from the right. Now when it gets close like that, I uh, wet it a little bit, give it a little wet, then you continue to pull, and that's it. So now you've got that tight knot right there, and you've got this loop coming from it, right? And then it goes right back up to your main line, nothing else on it. So then you take your uh, 1 or 2 hook right here, and this is what a lot of guys do, and you're screwing up. This is not how you do it. So you've got the hook like this. Let me show you what they do. You take the line, you kind of pinch it, you just go in this hole right here. Boom, right? Then you go through the other side. Boom, right? Now look at this hook right here. Does this hook, when the pressure's pulled, look at what the hook wants to do. It's not gonna turn this way. It's gonna turn this way. It doesn't wanna turn the right way. You have to go in through the other side. So what I'm gonna do is take it off. Just remember, go in from the hook side, where the hook is. Check this out now. So go in from the hook side, right? Pull the loop over and through. And now look, now look at the way it wants to swing. When you pull that hook, it's not gonna swing that way, it's gonna swing that way and hook the fish. That is one of the most important things you need to do, guys. Don't hook your hooks backwards that will make the, the hook itself be pulled away from the fish's mouth. You wanna have it hooked from the hook side when you're doing this, so it, when it gets pulled, it goes like that and hooks into the fish's mouth. And that's your dropper loop. Boom, all right guys, rock fishing rig time. So. I'm not doing anything new. I'm just adding to what we just did. I have my dropper loop set up right here. I've got my weight tied to my main line. I've got my first loop right here with my hook on it. All you need to do for rock fishing, go up about a foot and a half, two feet. You just make yourself another loop. Just gonna grab these right here and spin them five times like we did before. One, two, three, four, five. Just give it a little tug. And now you've got another loop. You've got a loop, another loop, and your weight. And that's your rock fishing rig, guys. That's it. The two things you need to know about rock fishing right now is that it's closed and you can only use two hooks. So for example, if you catch a rock fish with a sabiki, that sabiki has six, eight hooks on it, you have to throw the rock fish back. Don't get caught rock fishing with more than two hooks. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope this video helped you guys out. If you thought this video was helpful or enjoyed it, please hit the like button and consider subscribing. I'm doing my best to upgrade the channel at every turn that I can. As you can see, I set up a black background in my garage so I can do my tutorials a little bit better for you guys. 
So every like and every subscription really helps me out. I really appreciate it, guys. Thanks for watching. You!